it's not like it's always about money. It's about when you're talking to an environmentalist on the street or they're going to these protests and they're saying, I mean, there is, it's not that they're getting money from it. It's that they're, it's a personal attachment that you're saying, okay, I'm doing something wrong. And not only that, but it's a cultural thing. It's a society thing. Uh-huh. I was taught to eat mean dairy and animals from my parents. Now are you saying my parents were wrong the way they, were, they taught me? You're saying my family upbringing was wrong. Because if this was wrong, then that they raised me wrong, you know? So it's what a little deeper wrong? than... I suppose they should yeah. have been doing the blowjobs. <laughs> 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 well, like what else? So it's, it's a deep... Uh, a little more deep than just quitting sugar like sugar that's an easy one to say now but if you think of how like food is ritualized you know sort of in pagan societies totemic societies that there's that what about low like, when you think back to this country prior to european colonization and the native people of this country that would eat the buffalo worship the buffalo follow the buffalo around would you be going wait Stop it. <laughs> no, no. People ask us that about the indigenous, you know, these indigenous and tribes in the rainforest Amazon. It's like, I don't think they have Netflix. <laughs> like, and that is absolutely not who we're saying. They're living maybe in harmony with them. And these people a thousand years ago, we actually just recently interviewed indi- uh, one of the uh, leading indigenous activists in the U.S. Uh, his name is John Nash, incredible person. Um, we asked him that question and he said, you know, in the time we live in, it's not an argument. Back then, even say, you know, 200 years ago, 100 years ago, we had 1.5 billion people. Maybe maybe grass-fed beef even would do that regardless of any, you honor the cow. With the times we live in, to say that you're defending this by that you have some relationship to an indigenous a Native American that worshipped a buffalo and he weren't, didn't do something like be on the front of a magazine holding it under and saying like, I'm tough because I shot this with my 20th century you know, a dart where, and, and being proud about it, it's honoring it, honoring that animal that, you know, thank you. And, and with no ego involved, no, that it's higher than now it's providing. And that was hundreds of years ago. And, but right now with this many people, we just can't do it. Yeah. You know, like that's, you know, individual conversion is one thing, you know, but oh yeah. And that's a point I was going to make is yes, of course it is ridiculous to suggest that we have a literal connection to the totemic ideology of some sort of, you know, uh, tribe that lived off buffalo but we do still have the same impulse like you said you're saying my mum and dad were wrong to get me eating cheeseburgers you know that's the same sort of thing this is our ancestor worship this is our connection this is who we are you're asking people to give up you know like the barbecue is like sort of an australian ritual an american ritual even a uk ritual in some senses like the cooking of flesh outdoors and all that kind of stuff you're asking people to sort of in a sense dislocate and relocate things that make them who they are and the reason i agree with you that you know if we were starting from square one now start planet earth now you wouldn't go set up a big agricultural industry loads of slaughterhouses you know you'd go right what's the healthiest thing for human beings to eat what's the least ecological damage we can do what's the fairest way but you know but on that day one you know the day one reset planet earth ideology the number one thing you would probably change is in a for me see like we all have our own rubric we all have our own lens i feel like the things that are important is change the consciousness of individuals so that they recognize primarily they are part of a cohesive system they're not just individuals and two do not allow inequality to get out of hand you know because i feel that if you do those things everything else will take care you know like when people are awakened they don't want to have the blood of animals and other people on their hands anymore you know so i agree with you you're clearly right but i guess we've got to have to find ways of being uh amenable to other people's perspectives yeah and you do a good job of that you did great on joe and i i've I've been better over the years but sometimes i you know it's it's i love a really good thing to do is just asking questions you know just asking questions to explore because at the end of the day we're all doing the best we can i've been there you know we've all been there in different parts and it's just it's just everyone's doing the best we can and um say one thing about with the hunting and kind of people again that we get kind of uh, feedback or or trying to refute the film is what you know local is local okay it's like well how local do you want to go do you want to have this cow try having a a sheep or a cow live in your yard and see how fast it'll clear out everything in that yard where no other plant can live your garden's gone and nothing can live and then how local do you want it do you want it local enough where you know the person, the, the animal's name? Do you want it local enough where you are the one doing the killing? You know, how local do you want this? So the, the whole local thing is kind of a funny thing where, um, like, do you really want it local or do you want it a little bit removed? And I think at the end of the day, they want it removed because they don't want to look in the animal and 
you know, and, and know it too well. Yes. It's a funny thing. The local. Well, then it sort of, it, this reminds me then of the James Baldwin quote that the category of Negro is created because of the dominant culture's inability to own their own shadow. When people go like, what is it in us that allows this to happen? Where we are now technologically, where we, you know, like, you know, the culture needed an oppressed class, an oppressed class that could be condemned as over-sexualized, more like an animal, lazy, all of the things that are composite within any individual all cast out onto the, uh, onto the subjugated class. With something like uh, this, it's almost like, right, we live in this sort of potential technological utopia, but there seems to be certain things that are, if not hardwired into human beings, are, mm, g- 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 what do I want to say, integrated into the way we are. I wonder if we could as best as possible replicate the conditions that human beings are designed to live in. Small groups. We eat these things at this time of year. We are connected to our environment. We are connected to one another. You know, it seems like that the key issue is unconsciousness. Unconsciousness as in unawareness. Unconsciousness as in unawakeness. We're not aware of what's going on. I go unconscious several times a day. Do you know what I mean? Like if I am uncomfortable in my environment, like even my own house with my own family, I sort of, I sort of find myself shut down, switch off, stare at phone. I'm suddenly no longer present. I can't bear to be in that present and awakened state. These are the times where I'm likely to eat dumb food, do dumb stuff. You know, and I think we have a whole culture of people that are continually invited to enter into that state of unawareness and unconsciousness. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we're all... Doing the, I guess that's what I was saying, doing the best I can by no means, uh, you know, I, I've got a lot of work to do. I mean, I'm just yeah. starting to make films and do, try to reveal the truth interview, uh, talk to some good people just like you do. And just to make myself better to live, like you say, in heart, it, it's best to be with other, uh, other people and the rest of the planet. And that's all we can do really. Thanks for watching this podcast and going all the way to the end of it. Would you say kind of to click the bell? It might not be there because they're over there. And uh, subscribing so that we can infiltrate your serenity and peace of mind with jangling bells and buzzes. Thank you.